All right, good morning traders. Can you hear me and can you see the screen here for uh, JTrader? If you can, in the advanced webinar chat room, can you just say it, uh, type yes? And we can get started here. Okay. Yep. Thanks, Eighth Trader. Okay. So it looks like everything's good to go here. Uh, all right. Let's get started. So uh, we have J Trader today. Uh, he'll be doing some live uh, stock trading uh, in Bookmap here, uh, and we do this uh, every Wednesday. Uh, he comes in. You guys know the drill. Uh, the uh, uh, we have the educational course. We have the advanced uh, forward-looking analysis webinars uh, every day here at 10 a.m. Except for uh, Wednesdays and Thursdays, where we have live trading from two different traders. We have J Trader on Wednesdays for stocks, and we have Scott Pulsini, futures trader, uh, for um, for Thursday. So uh, it's a complete package for your education. You got the course, learn about order flow in the live market, and then learn from other traders as well. Uh, we also have Tom B uh, streaming uh, in the um, uh, the Traders Lab room, uh, so look for that uh, throughout the day. You'll see the uh, the live button, uh, you know, just like you see here in the advanced webinar section. Uh, so he'll he'll be in uh, uh, whenever uh, uh, he's uh, ready to start streaming. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Um, all right, so uh, J Trader, you guys know his story. Um, I'm going to put the, um, he, he's an educator and offers mentorship uh, services. So I'll put these into the chat here uh, in advanced webinar so you guys can um, uh, reach out to him if you uh, want, uh, uh, maybe uh, use his services or you have questions for him. Uh, you also can get special offers from J Trader here with his affiliate link. Okay, you got his email, his website, etc. Uh, all right, let's get into some of the disclosures and then we'll jump in. Uh, J Trader will be in soon. Uh, he usually comes in about 10:15 uh, or so, 10:20, something like that. He's finishing up his own trading room right now, uh, so uh, uh, he always comes in a bit late, uh, which is great. Uh, it gives us a chance to kind of recap uh, yesterday and a little bit of this morning uh, today uh, with uh, uh, what's going on within the markets. Uh, and then uh, have J Trader come in and you guys are all primed and ready to go. Uh, general disclosure, all bookmap limited materials, information and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Live trading is in simulation demo paper trading mode and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. So it's important that you know what you're getting involved with in here. This is not a trade copier room. It is for educational purposes only. Uh, it's a simulation uh, trading uh, so that people don't get all emotional. Instead, they learn about how JTrader looks at the market, how he reads order flow, and how he positions himself. Uh, that's the takeaway, uh, to learn about how the professional trader uh, looks at the market uh, and uh, also manages his trades, okay, his setups, his, his way of trading. Uh, and then uh, the simulation, well, our simulator is pretty good uh, in, in Bookmap, um, uh, but uh, it um, uh, is still simulation. I mean, it does put you in the queue, so you will have to wait, um, and, but uh, obviously... It, once you add even 100 shares in there or one lot in futures, uh, that can make a difference. So uh, it cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. Uh, let's go through the risk disclosure as well. Uh, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. And in an investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading, and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Okay, so uh, anyway, those are the disclosures, so uh, please uh, understand what you're getting involved with here. Uh, it's for educational purposes only. All right, let's take a look at the markets here. We can see, boom, right off to the, the start here. We're looking at the S&P E-mini. Uh, zoom out a little bit, and um, uh, we were all bearish last week. Well, we're all bullish this week. All right, starting on Monday, I mean, we had the move to the downside and then a massive move to the upside. 
All right so we were looking for that on monday uh and then tuesday yesterday we weren't quite too sure uh it was uh, more kind of a uh, uh, looking for just some consolidation uh, and then uh, let's just take a look at our higher time frame here uh, and um, on the daily chart or this is daily yeah this is a daily here and we just had this massive wick here on, on the daily it's uh, I need to maybe have less bars in here hold on a minute if I put in 150 yeah, this will do the trick. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Was that 1,500? That's not what I want. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, you can see this um, uh, huge wick here. Uh, and then uh, uh, yesterday, kind of consolidation period in here. Boy, this isn't really doing the trick either. Let's look at 50. No, i got to look at more than that. Uh, we're down below the swing here. That's important. Ten. <laughs> okay. Well, ten bars does the trick. Here's uh, Monday. Okay. Uh, the move to the downside, massive wick. Here's yesterday, uh, and we have uh, kind of some back and forth within this area here, uh, and then today uh, we're opening, and uh, we are back up in here. Uh, a back above uh, yesterday's swing. So uh, interesting stuff, uh, and. Um, uh, yeah, you know, we have FOMC later today, so uh, not really sure what to uh, think of uh, the, the move to the upside here uh, at the moment. Um, we can see that uh, there's a um, uh, kind of a swing here, uh, maybe looking for a retest back to 44.86 or 87, somewhere around there. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll see if the buyers continue to come in here and uh, lift the market back up into those areas. Uh, let's look at the hourly here. And uh, yeah, we can see the uh, gap fill from uh, um, uh, Monday. Uh, yesterday, some back and forth in here. Uh, and then the uh, uh, today, we just closed on the hourly chart uh, up above uh, the, uh, the swing high here. Okay, so that's bullish. Uh, we'll see if this accepts or not. Uh, we'll look at the order flow uh, in here. Uh, what I want to cover, though, uh, is um, uh, the, the five minute chart here. Now we talked about this briefly yesterday. Here's our consolidation period yesterday. Okay, so uh, uh, look at this huge wedge. Okay, now what we want to look at in bookmap is the order flow at these critical areas in here. Okay, I uh, don't know if you guys saw it, saw the buyers come in here, probably some really strong buying here, probably some flipping of the order book. They're on the offer, they probably pulled, they probably added on the bid look for this on the higher time frame look for significant volume to come in here and then we we covered this actually we were looking for a move potential move back up into these areas here uh, and then that would be it though okay just to move up to the top of the wicks here uh, or a move back down into some of these wicks down in here well we got the breakout to the upside and you can see it paused here at this little area but there is still more buying pressure. So again, relentless on, on the buy side. And where did they go? Okay, look at the market structure. Uh, they went up to this little structure up here. Okay, and that was about it. And then it sold off. Where did it sell off to? Just about where it initiated here. Okay, so when we draw up our structures in bookmap, we're doing the same process here uh, in, this, uh, in this chart. Uh, good morning, David. Um, and uh, you can see this uh, uh, wedge pattern here, the breakout, the retest, and then the overnight session. And, the, and then, uh, you know, I don't have that data in here, but we can see the cash session and the move to the upside. All right. So uh, anyway, market structure is essential to understand. So uh, draw up your levels, uh, whatever you might be looking at, if it's volume profile, uh, if it's patterns, uh, if it's, you know, fib levels, whatever. Uh, but look at your structure, your bigger picture structure. Now you want to look at the order flow around that structure. And that's the key, right? That will confirm your uh, uh, structure or your position or not. Uh, and um, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's what we want to take a look at. All right, so uh, we're bullish at the moment. I mean, you, you can see the move above the swing here, uh, up into high liquidity up here at 44.35. Uh, and we're getting a bit of a pullback here. 
Uh, anyway, it looks like J Trader just got in, so I don't know if we're not going to have any time to go through a uh, book map here. Uh, we're going to jump right into stocks with J Trader. Uh, uh, yesterday, oh, I do want to cover yesterday um, the uh, just uh, uh, the recordings of these webinars uh, because we went over uh, in detail low volume pullbacks yesterday. This is a great strategy. Okay, so look or looking for uh, low volume pullbacks for optimizing your trading. Uh, you can find it here uh, on the bookmap uh, uh, website or uh, YouTube page here. Uh, scroll down, live recordings here. You can click on the, the uh, playlist or you can click on the latest one that is right here and it's called low volume pullbacks. Okay, so uh, click on that. Uh, some great stuff in here. Uh, look for these low volume Good pullbacks. We went over it in some detail here. Uh, I think it can be really helpful for you guys. All right, so you got the recording. Uh, I'll put it into the chat for you as well. All right. Okay. So uh, let's turn it over to J Trader. J Trader, we're all set. We went through the disclosures and everything, uh, and uh, ready to turn it over to you. Good morning, Bruce and team. Can you hear me, Bruce? Yes, loud and clear. Okay. So let me share the screen. Good morning, first of all, traders. Uh, I'm gonna over here, Bruce. You prefer a screen share in screen quality 720 or uh, 1080? Uh, good question. Um, I it's not so much about the um, uh, that quality. It's more about the frames per second. Okay, uh, that I can only put minimum fifteen. That's fine. That's fine. Go go with that, uh, and then go with the 10, 10, uh, 1080 if you can. Uh, and let's okay. let's see what it looks like. If there's issues, it's a seven twenty five. Let me change to seven. Uh, okay. Seven twenty then. Change window, stream quality, all right, 1080 over here. So let me know if you see this good. Yes. Yeah, it looks, looks good. Okay, so good morning, everybody, again. Uh, very slow day, the last couple of days in a small cap plan. Uh, I've been trading mostly big caps, and today I was, for example, on uh, Microsoft. We had also Tesla, uh, Apple, uh, NQES. Uh, LICD BA. So these are the trades that we covered this morning. Uh, it was a good morning, uh, but again, for small caps, I didn't see any kind of A plus setup to trade. So uh, we had Xila, we had VCNX. Uh, I was looking also at uh, X curve over here. We had BBIG, which was another of those stocks that uh, gap with a dead cat bounce. But again, no A plus setup. So when the market is very uh, slow, I'm not really looking to trade uh, only because I need to trade. So the first thing is patience and discipline. I explain you why. So I'm taking an example of a trader of last week. He traded uh, two times big caps with our strategy and uh, two days only, two days only when we traded Baba and Netflix. And he traded nothing else. Well, he made his good paycheck for the month in two days of work. Okay. So doesn't mean that you have to trade every single day uh, in order to make money, in order to make a living with trading. But when you trade, trade less, but trade better. Okay. That's the point. Now, looking at uh, this morning, Microsoft, uh, I shared also execution before. Uh, let me grab it. Uh, the, the work that we did. So I started taking over here a position long uh, because I was looking for this dip. I work a little bit and then right away I stopped out, lost one hour over here. And then uh, J line rejection over here. I was seeing sellers. I was looking at book for a high liquidity level. I scale in, added, loaded the both on this top over here, loaded more covering to the dip. So basically lost one hour, made eight hour over here with this first partial, re-added more after the rejection. So not while it was going up, I missed the top over here. A little bit slow basically, but I was looking also at Apple and Tesla. Um, this was still like core around here. So trailing the money partial and then the remaining over here. And then basically uh, almost break even the rest. So this is uh, Microsoft and uh, Microsoft this morning is uh, uh, gapping up after yesterday earnings. And at the open, we had this pop just near the pre-market high and then simply faded. So what I tried doing was to buy this dip, 
looking for a push, but instead we had this unwind. So this level of J lines over here, 304, started to short. I was looking at the main liquidity zone that we see over here, uh, 305, and then another one over here, you can see a 304, and then one more over here at 303, so every all dollar, all, uh, sorry, dollar number. And then the last rejection over here that I missed, the 303 and 40, uh, while yes, and in Q were bouncing, this was simply still fading, uh, for example, like Apple did. Okay, so you can see that today we had one, two, three perfect Jalen rejections, all right? Uh, this is the easiest stuff to trade. And now we'll see if we have another setup. So probably pushing over here at 302, we'll look for a short. Looking at uh, Apple, Remember also today, uh, we have the FOMC at two o'clock, and then we have earnings of Tesla after hours. So I believe that the market won't, won't, won't be trading, trending, sorry, for these hours. And on FOMC day, I'm generally conservative. So even the, uh, the amount of trading I want to do is only restricted to the first hour generally. Apple, uh, we had the same pattern that uh, we saw on uh, Microsoft. So I prepare over here a book map and I wanted to show you something. Okay. So once we uh, dip over here into the 161 and 50, uh, this level here, 50 and 60s, sorry, we pushed over here to this area of liquidity. Okay. So how to find a level of liquidity? It's pretty simple. You have to look basically also the previous days, but you can see also in intraday over here that we have this uh, dip over here. We have dip over here, dip over here, dip over here. And then this is a pretty good level of liquidity. So that liquidity that I see over there, and we have a top over here, 163. Also, but we have a huge amount of uh, resistance. So this is a nice supply zone. This over here which is this level over here, 163. So over here, you can really look to trade the, the fake breakout, okay? Because this is the high fake breakout right away, boom, down. And then you're looking for the next target down here, right? So I, I didn't trade Apple, so, but I'm telling you uh, what the system is telling me with the Jalen's over here for the backside with bookmap together. Now, again, on this, if I'm going to have a JLA rejection, so in the 162.60, 162.70, this area over here, Apple can be a good uh, rejection uh, level to trade. Market is simply ranging uh, because uh, if you look at NQ, this morning we had an open uh, weakness right away and we dipped into this support. So just look over here in a 50 minute chart. Okay. So we can trace our level of support down here. Actually, I never like to put those uh, level support. I prefer to put zones of liquidity. So this is a nice supply, demand, supply. And then again, supply, supply, and over here becomes a demand zone. So you can see the shift, right? How we pass from being a support zone to a resistance zone, and then a resistance zone, resistance against support. So NQ, and once, uh, NQ was pushing, then it started to reject over here at 14,500, and then again into this range. So we need to wait for a direction before trading uh, big caps, all right? We need a direction over here, which we just still don't have. Now, looking at Tesla, so these are some of the stocks I'm watching this morning. Again, I can tell it's a very slow day, right? But anyways, we are here over here together. So let's look if we have possibilities or let at least analyze the market. Uh, you can see that this is my chart on the daily. And I trace over here uh, zones of uh, supply and demand. These gray zones over here. So these zones are basically uh, the levels where we had more dips or pops. And we can see, for example, down here, we have the main J lines two, 
right? That we dipped exactly into the J lines two over here, eight fifties, and then bounce two days ago over here. We bounced until nine sixty. Going to a one minute chart. This morning we had almost the same thing as NQ. Basically, we had the fake pop, then unwind over here, bounce from that uh, demand zone, uh, curl over here with a J lines push. A break and then again inside the trading range. So what are what is the plan over here on Tesla? You cannot simply trade, at least this is my way of trading, in a range. You need to see some kind of uh, uptrend or downtrend. So you need an established trend in order to have a low risk uh, reward scenario, low risk high reward scenario, and in order to have a edge, right? Because if we're gonna trade over here. Any moment that, for example, we're gonna look for a breakout over here, we're gonna be stuffed because this is a stuff move, right? And then right away you're back in the trading range. So you're gonna lose over here. If you look at that stuff move, exactly over here, 1007, this pop. You can see over here that push right away into that liquidity zone. Let me Zoom in a little bit. Okay. So we push in this level over here, 963. Which was the breakout, right? 962 and 24, right away it stops immediately. So this is something that I avoid always to buy breakouts. That's not in my DNA. Buying breakouts was good if you were living in the 1980s, 1990s, that everybody like uh, Barry Roth, uh, Larry Connors, they were buying breakouts, uh, Tony Odds, you know, they wrote the uh, stock market uh, guides those years. In this market right now, you have to look for the breakout and then you have to buy pullbacks, you know, like the Ross hook. We're basically looking for high volume zones after that breakout. That confirms that you have still uh, a very used demand for the follow through of the move. Over here, you can see that we pop right away, we fail. So when I have these particular cases, I look to trade just below that resistance level. All right. And this is over here in 962. And then you can start looking if you have an increased amount of sellers. So you can see over here uh, two things. We have a huge amount of buyers, right? So you can see that buyers over here are in control, at least until this point. And then once these buyers are basically exhausted, we start having a huge amount of sellers. And we start passing from 962 to 956. You know, a couple of minutes, right? So over here loses six bucks in about two minutes of trading. And we move from this 962 down over here to this level. Then we start consolidating over here and we have another leg down. Uh, I'm not gonna trade over here short until at least the break of this low. So I wanna see trend because if the stock will be like this, that's not a case scenario where I'm looking to trade, that I'm looking to trade. So we have Microsoft, we have SRA. So this is a small cap, but with, uh, I would say, uh, few red flags in the sense, I'm gonna bring up this one second. We're gonna focus one second on SRA just to see the stats. We're talking about the small cap traders, right? Even if it's a $25 stock, we're still talking about a small cap gap up yesterday for the first day. The stock has around 90% institutional ownership. So hopefully over here will load. Must be my connection. So we have uh, SRA. Uh, pardon my error. We have a 38% institutional ownership. Uh, we have a, a actually SRA. Sorry, it didn't upload. 
I know why it's doing like this. Now it's not uploading. It is over here. It's uploading over here. We see Jivo behind. Okay, so the, the server here is probably down. But anyways, we have a high institutional ownership on SRA. This means that we have 90% uh, right, of uh, institutional that hold over here. And we have all these dips into the 21, 50, 22. They're basically accumulating and then popping over here. So when I see this high institutional ownership stock, it's harder to take a short. And being that this is still a small market cap, right? And it's hard to take this for a short because they will trap ideally and then push again. So this morning, my plan was to look for this level over here, being that it's a gap down play, looking for a pop and fill, but didn't basically happen. And I didn't take any kind of trade on this one. Now we're looking for this level of resistance and then the next one over here, 26. So what I'm doing over here, I'm looking for that 25 and 25, you can see whole round on a number is also with a small liquidity zone. And then I'm looking for this 26 where I can see another small liquidity zone. But the volume over here is not high because we have only like sellers of around 5K. And uh, therefore, I'm waiting the stock. I'm waiting for at least an extension to 26 before trading this short, all right? Uh, did I want to trade this uh, uh, long? Well, we have dilution on. So it's not the best idea over here to trade this, uh, this uh, long, all right? I'm trading stats and I'm trading over here my statistics. And so is telling me that in the long term, it's harder to trade these stocks long when they have dilution because any moment they can dump. So careful doing that, right? Careful doing that. Now, as I said, let's look for a 26. So if we're going to have that level, we will look for a possible trade. Basically, I want to see this breakout. And this is the same exact pattern that we saw just a few minutes ago on Tesla, all right? So you can see that things basically repeat. Any question, traders? Okay. Let's get back to Tesla. So we are still inside the previous day range. We are above that uh, demand zone. Let's look at Apple. So Apple started to unwind and break the, let's say, the low of the day. We're gonna put Apple up. So we are at that main support zone, 161 and 50. You can see we start to see some bounce over here. Question, am I going to look for short over here, the support? No, not at all. Instead, I'm looking more for shorting pops. Am I going to buy over here dips? No, because we're still in a downtrend from this morning, making lower highs and lower lows. So until I will have this scenario, I'm not really looking to buy over here for small bounces. So no counter trend move over here, right? Well, let's see Apple making higher lows right now. This is what's happening on a daily chart. Sorry, on the five minute chart when you have also here the daily J lines. And this is for me is very important to, uh, to spot. So this green area is one of the, the main levels that we have on the chart in the last months. You can see each time we got this 163, we basically rejected. So this zone over here is acting as a high volume supply zone. All right, each time over here, we had this level and then basically rejected, came down, came down, came down, came down. So again, today we touched that 63, 64 level and then started to unwind. 
Uh, do I have over here any kind of A plus setup to trade? Well, the first day was trading short, but then over here we had a lot of uh, inside bars, and therefore we have no A plus setup because it's inside this trading range. So I'm explaining you how to find the best scenario to trade. Microsoft, we're still far from the J lines. ES over here is again below the open level. Uh, Tesla, uh, J lines, but basically lateral over here. Apple, uh, lateral for now. Uh, still bouncing from the support 161 and 50. Over here, we can put SRA. And BBIG over here. For now, I'm going to keep things uh, pretty simple. All right. So we have the view up in Zaylands over here. So these levels are the ones that I'm watching, this and now this over here. I'm going to look this at 162 and 50s. At the same time, traders, I'm looking for ES and NQ if they give me that confirmation. So if we get to that level 162 and 50, I want to see the same time NQ, and I want to see also ES that are basically rejecting. So Microsoft is almost doing the same over here. We have Tesla, SRA, I'm going to put over here NQ. Still far from the J line, so I'm not really entering down here. Microsoft, nothing for now. Apple, almost there. I think we can have another good uh, J line rejection. Yes, it's still weak. So holding over here VWAP, but it's still weak. Tesla below VWAP in J lines. Okay, SRA breakout. 
Let's start looking at SRA traders. Look at green volume over here, passing on the right. Let's filter this at least at uh, 9,099 shares. Actually, maybe this is too much for a $24 stock. We're going to put it at 5,000. You can see the amount of buyers that we have right now. Right? So SRA, uh, technically, we had a bull flag from that main support. And now, what we said before, we are looking for this 26. I was looking this morning bars on the SRA. Uh, basically, almost every broker has them, have them, even for a cheaper price. We're going to break the 25. There we are. First push to 25.50. This area here, you can see right away, bar stepping in. And as we said, we're looking for that 25.80 or 26, where we have the high liquidity zone, right? I'm looking for that level over here. So holding 25. The main level of support is down here 2420. So they're trying to hold it. Some seller at 2510, another one at 2515. So they're trying over here to put a little bit of resistance above creating a small wall of sellers, 25, 25, 10, 25, 16. Okay, yes, yeah, so for now, seems as uh, SRA over here and that's going. So yes, not 89% institutional ownership, 79%. And we have also small float, okay? Small float, 5.54 million of float, can be five or six, whatever. Uh, financials over here, they have small cash. So when a company in this case uh, has 97, 97 million of cash, uh, for the quarter and they're burning all, almost 10 million per month so we have like nine ten months of cash over here basically this is not sufficient for them to live uh, i basically wouldn't look for uh, any kind of play long uh, because of this net income which is negative because we have no cash uh, also you can go check and they have dilution on and the history of this stock is it sells in the uh, first day. So we had three gappers uh, with a filter over here of each gapper being at least 20%. And all those three gappers close red on the day. So that means close red. Close below the open level. And the average ext extension, so from the uh, open to the high of the day, is uh, uh, plus 4%. 
So again, it's not one of those stocks that I'm looking too long. Basically, for all that what we said right now, I'm looking more for a short, but I'm looking for those specific levels. Again, pull back. No big amount of sellers. We're still up trending. So we can switch now this until we don't have that 2580 or 26. All right, let's look at Apple that we have over here a pop into the J lines, right? Uh, NQ is totally lateral, so really no trend. Yes, really no trend. So very hard over here to take the trade. Uh, congestion, laterality. Joseph, I know uh, there's. A, it's a slow day here, uh, you know, and you're looking for your. Um, uh, you, you have the FOMC. Uh, the last few days have been some some pretty nice moves, big moves. Um, just a, a note, I, I really like the analysis, the way that uh, you're going through and uh, um, looking at the fundamentals here, uh, really kind of assessing and you're filtering. So it's not just because the stock moved a lot, um, it's what, what kind of company is it? Um, and then that starts to uh, filter your strategies, uh, how you want to uh, approach the trading. Uh, so uh, yeah, really, really nice uh, uh, way to uh, top-down approach here. Very, very clear uh, and uh, objective way of uh, filtering your stocks. Thank you, Bruce. So back to SRA traders. Again, we're gonna wait for these pops into this possible pop, right? Into the 2580, 26, and until that uh, zone over here, I'm staying simply uh, uh, patient. I still don't have bars over here, not because I, I don't have them, but they are available and even many, so I can take them uh, when I want. Uh, basically, see still bars on the anti brokers. Uh, we have for now an uptrending stock, so every single small pullback over here was bought in, like right now is doing. And therefore, we still don't have a reversal. We still have like no big sellers, okay, jumping in this one. And you can see that. It didn't still give me, you know, that big drop over here, that big sell off. Um, let's check one second into the filings. So being that we have a little bit of time, a lot of traders ask me if I can cover a little bit of filings. So SRA, first of all, let's look at the 424B5, which is the description of the offering. Exactly over here, preliminary prospective supplement, uh, public offering price. So they're gonna uh, basically raise over here 100 million, right? We are offering an aggregate of 100 million in shares of our common stock. Uh, on January 24, 2002, the last reported sale price of our common stock on the NASA global market was 15.51 per share. Assume a public price of 15.51 per share, we would offer 6.51. Uh, 400,000 shares of common stock in the offering. Uh, we go down over here and we see, I'm gonna make it be this easier. The offering over here, they basically repeat what we just read. Uh, over here, the underwriter can exercise this option anytime within the 30 days from the date of this prospective supplement, right? We have granted on the riders an option to purchase an additional 50 million shares of our common stock from us. So option, right? An option to do that. So we have, again, what we said before, uh, our net losses were 69.2 million and 80.9 million for the nine months and of September 30, 2021. In the year ended 2031. 
as of September 30, 2021, we had an accumulated deficit of 915 million for a company that if I remember correctly, was around 350 or whatever uh, market cap, right? So they have an accumulated deficit three times more almost of their market cap. Things change if, for example, we go uh, to see other companies. So this is really like a, a shell company. What is a shell company, traders? Anybody knows it? Feel free to write in the advanced webinar uh, chat room. Based in Kaiman, mostly offshore, exactly, exactly. So, uh, exactly, Nikos, exactly. So, all these basically, we have a company that lives through dilution. It's a company that basically is, uh, uh, I would say, uh, looking to do pump and dumps and looking to use the news in order to collect traders. And these traders will basically um, buy a paper, okay? So buying paper, why paper? Because basically this company is not worth anything right now, 24 bucks. It's not its price, right? Uh, exactly, exactly, exactly. So good point, traders. And you can see these things over here. You can see they have dilution. They have really no cash. So even if you don't have like, you know, a tool like could be actual trade or whatever, you just need to go check the last filings. In this case, the 424B5. If you don't see in that, then very simple. Go in the last, for example. Um, let's see over here. Let's see over here. Let's see over here. Mm -mm -mm. This institutional. I wanted to show you where you have to go. Just go check in the quarterly report. Of course, that's three day they put it out after, but I mean, at least looking already over here, the thank you. Uh, you can go down generally for the American company, US companies base, you'll see right away accumulated deficit over here in the first uh, few pages. And you can see that 915 million over here, right? Negative is between brackets over here. So 950 millions of accumulated deficit, which is very, very high, right? Very, very high. And even if they show you that big over here, you see, oh, 197 million over here of um, cash. But basically you have to compare that cash to over here where you see net loss and comprehensive loss. They're basically losing for three months, 28 millions. So if they're losing over here, for example, in nine months, 69 million, all right so it doesn't mean that that cash is enough for let's say one year and when a company has one year of cash left it's really really bad okay it's really a red 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 um signal okay issue of common stock from another market offering net offering cost and so on and so on so, on. so there you're already seeing what they say over there that they have also traders what they had another atm in the past okay over here, we can see the ones that they still have. And then you can go check over here. If you go down, we'll probably see warrants. So if you don't want to do what I'm doing over here, you do Control F. And then you write over here, warrants. Warrants. Well, now they're they coming out so many. Go check the sheet. Per first common stock warrants over here, they're already talking about warrants. Let's see if they have their sheet. Then I prefer to look at the sheet because it's a little bit faster. You just need a little bit of patience. Say warrants over here, okay. Anyways, I cannot see it over here, but generally you will see a sheet where you see the price of the warrants, okay? So what the price is for the exercise of the warrants. Okay, now getting back to our stock, knowing all of this doesn't mean, oh, wow, it's a company that basically is worth nothing. We're going to sell it at the open, loading the boat, not caring about the price action, because that is what they want. Is what they want, and then they are like uh, uh, trapping you, and they start like pushing their own stock higher. Instead, we have to wait for levels 
we will start seeing like big hands selling, okay? Big hands are basically the whales. So the 26 over here, why it's a good level in my opinion uh, to look for a short. Maybe, maybe it won't go good, right? Maybe it will go 29 before they drop. But we have a very good uh, history in the stock that a 26 was a good level over here where they dumped at least one time and second time over here. Now we can do a little bit more uh, work. We can go back in the past, in the previous months, and see if, for example, they had another 26 level over here in the past that maybe was a good level where they dumped it over here, right? We had this pop, for example, but you can see no volume. So all of this chart that we can see in the previous months has basically no kind of uh, confirmation because even if we dump over here from 26 and 50, there are basically no volume that confirms this. And a move with no volume is nothing, all right? It's basically like a Coca-Cola with no bubbles. So we create over here another dip, but it's still uptrending. Uh, Joseph, I know you need to leave early, uh, so uh, uh, let us know when. Uh, uh, Thank you, Bruce. Uh, we can still stay uh, twenty minutes, good, and look if uh, we can have uh, we can have a good setup over here. Thank you, Bruce, for uh, for your courtesy. No, no, no problem at all. Uh, you always give so much in these webinars. Uh, thank you. So let's look, traders at Apple. Uh, one main point that I would like to uh, we say uh, explain over here. Uh, I don't know if you can see my chart good, so I will try right now to to basically uh, okay enlarge it over here. So this is Apple. Apple with Tesla with uh, Nvidia is one of my best stocks to trade uh, because I. I like started to you know understand how it moves. So I know how it moves. I know, and I have a very good feel. I know how to react to J lines. I know how to react to support. So it's like you know you do something every single day. You go to the bar every single day. You know that that is the kind of coffee they will serve you. You're gonna expect you know every single day almost the same stuff, right? And the same thing in trading. Okay, when you see something every single day and you see how it reacts in a certain scenario with a certain parameters then you may look for the same exact things every single time. Uh, a trader asked me, why didn't you trade, for example, this last, last JLS, right? Because if you know my strategy, it gives me a very low uh, risk when I enter over here. Then we have over here a second zone, maybe a stop, and then a re-entry, and then another re-entry over here. So four, uh, three good uh, possible scenarios. Uh, the trade is down you can see we have like a, a wedge formation over here but the point is we don't have any kind of trend right now on es and nq and of course looking at only this and looking at this spot and looking at this spot i can see three main levels of resistance even before you know happens because of what we are calling before i was calling 162 and 50 remember a few minutes ago because this is the level that my trading system tells me over here, trading strategy tells me, okay, I'm looking for a possible short. And then I'm looking every single time at what bookmap is doing in order to confirm the perfect timing. Because even if I know it's a short, I don't want to short down here. I want to short into this area over here because I know that my risk is much smaller. And uh, for the fact that again, ES and NQ were not giving me a defined trend, then I stood away from trading Apple. Okay. This is the one of the, the main things this morning I was doing. So when I was trading, for example, short on Microsoft, I was looking at ES and NQ that that time they were dumping and NQ was forming a bear flag. And we were talking, we are talking about the the first over here, 15, 20 minutes after the gate, this this zone over here. 
Now you can see the NQ is slide, really slowly unwinding. This is the main support. This is 200 exponential uh, on the on the five minute chart. Uh, Tesla is slowly fading into this high supply zone. Let's check again Apple. So again, looking for that liquidity. Let's look how it reacts. Right. This is not a trade I will ever take, only because we're around 11 o'clock in a non-trending uh, stock in a non-trending market, right? But let's look how it reacts. So we have a very nice uh, formation over here of liquidity, 162 and 20, 162 and 25. And we start seeing the first amount of sellers, right? I keep them very small because I have a lot of book maps uh, at the same time open on my monitor, so I cannot keep the dots big for all of them. Right, otherwise it would get simply crazy. But that's your timing of entry over here. This 162 and 15 exactly over here, risking that 162 and 26. Why? Uh, because we have this uh, small wall of sellers, right? We're not talking about 30, 40,000 of here big sellers. Now, a first main one over here, um, uh, yeah, is at 25 exactly over here. So that is the first level of selling. This 162.15, if it doesn't go, you simply cut it. In this case, we have a bounce. So let's see over here if, uh, if it's still pushing. And where to put the risk? The risk we have to put, for example, the previous relative high, or in this case, at the view up over here, at 162.38. So this is the area to look for short, which is this area over here. And we'll see if it reacts and how it reacts as we had uh, in, the, in the previous moves. So over here, you can see they uh, cancel, all right? The 162 and 36. Remember, we're using this as a risk, which is this level is a risk which is the VWAP, which is the previous relative high. The volume is almost the same all day long, right? Now, they're still making over here, they're still putting, sorry, some buyers, but for example, we broke the first support and now we're rejecting this first support. So we have this possible scenario over here. And you can see the first bar rejected from 162 and 30s so let's see if we're going to hold below this level over here, 162 and 20. One sixty two and 28. We have a little bit more seller over here. And I always invite you to put a stop loss, for example, a hard stop loss, okay? so that you have no problems in case you may miss uh, lack discipline. You can see how it basically cleared out over here, the high supply zone dipped, still holding over here, this 162 and 20, which is the level of J lines. And it's still a good valley short setup over here until we don't have this breakout, right? So on a confirmed red bar, so wait for this one minute candle. Okay, confirm red over here. We should see a fail right now. Why I'm saying that? Because we had a fake breakout over here. So this is a stuff move. Uh, red bar formation. So uh, we have a high chance this is going to break. Otherwise, our risk over here. Again, below the 62 and 20. So right now we started to form lower highs. And again, like before, right? We start forming then lower highs. And then over here, you can see that we start forming lower highs. At a certain point over here, we held. And then we started forming again lower highs. And again, over here, we started forming the lower highs. 
So each time we have really like a push and then a fail. We have a push and a fail, a push and a fail, push and a fail, and then a push and a fail over here. So try to have always two charts. One maybe where you have a 15 minutes, 30 minute chart or hourly chart that basically shows you the the previous support resistance levels. And then you put those levels together with bookmap. This is how I do it. And then I have a very short time frame, can be a one or five minutes or a three minutes or a two minutes, whatever you prefer, to spot the timing. And again, all these bars from this, you can see they make higher highs, higher highs, higher lows as well. And then the first bar over here makes lower high. And again, we have the breakdown of the lower low. So when I said uh, once we break 162 and 20, being that this is a fake breakout, so a possible stuff move, red close, we may have the fader. Again, our risk from now, we can bring it down from 162 and 39, 41, down to, for example, below the break even. So we can risk, for example, the high of this bar. Okay. By doing like this, you basically risk free. And now you can let your trade work. Make sense, traders? So this is really the process from how to find the setup to trade uh, to uh, how you move down your um, how you move down your risk. Okay. Yeah, yeah, real, real clear, Jace, uh, uh, Joseph. Uh, just you know, looking at again, I, we we cover in in all these webinars, uh, looking at your levels that you want to trade on the higher time frame, and then looking at the order flow around those levels. Exactly. 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 So ni nice little move there in Apple. Yeah. Again, a lower high, lower low. So we can see that the price is fading. Good, right? We know that at this level, we had some demand. So 161 and 50, 161 and 60. Again, we had it over here with a dip over here on the wash at 161.35. So this was a, an exhaustion of the move. So now we can expect a level of support between 161 and 50 and 161 and 60, right? So we have the possibility to go down over here. At the first higher high, for example, we can trail half of our position. So this is how I would do for a very small move like this in order to lock in at least partial of profits. And then the second high over here would be the remaining trailing in the money. And uh, if we don't go instead in, uh, in trailing, we're going to look for the first half target over here. So this is the complete breakdown of how to select a trade and how to learn how to trade it. You can see that the first main uh, support level, they start to bounce. Over here, we have the first resistance, 162. Yeah, 162 over here, break of that resistance. So remember what we said before, first higher high out, second higher high out the rest, higher high out the rest, sorry. And now, eventually, we'll see if we're going to reject again and then take another move. Again, this is not one trading style that I would do as the market is not trending, right? So we're really slowly fading, and these are not the setup that I prefer to trade.
All right, let's check again uh, Tesla, SRA. Okay, in the meantime, traders, uh, last five minutes together. Do you have any questions? Yeah, I mean, just uh, kind of reiterating, I, I know, I think it was months ago that you, you talked about it, but the way that you trade the large caps is so different uh, due to your kind of fundamental analysis on it. Uh, and uh, you're then technically you're looking for the bigger moves to start to unfold. So you're looking at daily uh, highs and lows to break uh, and confirm those breaks. Uh, on uh, on on strong volume is it, is that is that a correct uh, kind of assessment? Yes, Bruce. Exactly. 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 Yeah, I mean it makes sense. I mean there's some reason that uh, you know a, a large cap uh, is is breaking uh, and uh, uh, some sort of demand or some sort of news or something like that, and then you, it's such a big ship that you're jumping on. Uh, and and uh, and taking it taking it for a ride or as far as you can, uh, mm -hmm. the um, uh, these other ones uh, the smaller uh, the small caps here, uh, well if it's a good company or what their fundamentals are, uh, then that starts to filter and dictate uh, the way that you're looking at it. Absolutely, I mean uh, B X R X B X R X sorry. Is one of these companies look these companies over here they just like try to push and then they simply fade down and then they try to push again this morning they simply fail down so we're talking really about uh, cheap companies over here uh not worth not even a penny over here <laughs> and this is basically the the edge that you have in small caps so a uh, few things uh the uh, stats for example that we had in the small caps since the starting of the month of the year uh track is uh, for all the small caps that we had at least 20% gapper uh, that had yes or no dilution, but they have, for example, a uh, history of fading or they had uh, fluff news. We had uh, uh, this based on the, uh, the last stats on the weekend, we had 34 gaps and actually, sorry, 36 stocks and 94% uh, faded uh, below the open to our main target of Jalen. So it's a very big stat, okay? It gives you big ads. Understanding for all of you traders that these small caps, uh, when they have certain parameters, they tend to fail and uh, they tend really to die on day one, maximum day two. Yeah, that's, that's a whole industry. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Uh, uh, that's how they generate cash. Um, and uh exactly uh yeah it's um yeah they've been i mean it's been the pink sheets and the over the counter and all that kind of stuff they've been doing it for years uh but uh now yeah, yeah i guess you you know <laughs> really have to know what you're looking at uh, absolutely you don't want to become a bag holder on this stock buddy you don't want to become a bag holder i mean just look over here for example i don't know if you okay over here there was a river split but let's say on something like, I don't know, like this, let's say you buy over here because that day seems everybody, all the world itself is buying this at four and they traded 175 million and you call your grandma and you tell grandma, please buy some over here at four. This will be like the next uh, BTC or the next, you know, Google or the next Apple. And then like uh, two weeks later, grandma calls you and it tells you, how is it going, buddy? And you say, Grandma, we lost the house, 50% down. And then you call even more over here. No, we lost 75%. Sorry, Grandma. Yeah. So careful to long this stuff, traders, okay? Small caps, 90% of these tend to fail, okay? Like 90% of the altcoins you see out there is just like uh, something that is going to blow up and go bankruptcy. All right, Bruce, uh, need to go to out, you know, for why? Um, in the meantime, I want to always to thank you for uh, holding these webinars. I hope traders that you find it useful. Please reach out to me in, uh, even in private or right over here in the advanced webinar if you have any questions or if you like the content, if you would like that we cover something else. We do this in order to uh, spread knowledge of really how to day trade and or swing trade and using order flow. So again, thank you, Bruce. Thank you, Bookmap again. Uh, thank you, everybody, and see you next week.
Thank you, Jay Trader. Uh, I put your uh, uh, contact information there into the uh, chat. So if anyone wants to reach out to Jay Trader, you can. Uh, you'll see it there in the uh, advanced webinar chat room. Okay. Thanks Thank again. Thank you very much. Okay. Take Bye -bye. care.